In this episode... But I'm definitely connecting with a second father that uh, tried to be a father and failed miserably. In your mother's case, she didn't know how to express herself. So the only way she could was to bake you something or to make you something or to make these little things. And that was the way she told you she loved you. This was strictly a cultural thing. This had nothing to do with the lack of love. This was just that it didn't work. Yeah, and there was a betrayal. Ever since I was little, I had a strange and uncanny ability to know things about people. But when I was 19, I was the victim of violence, and I had a really strange out-of-body experience. The worst day of my life became the best day because it left me with an ability to help others in a really deep and meaningful way. I'm able to connect and communicate and share messages from our loved ones who've passed on and are part of spirit now. And it's all about hope, healing, forgiveness, and most of all, love. I'm Colette Baron reed and I'm here to share messages from spirit. you uh, lady in sparkles yes sparkle girl um, I keep picking up postmen or bus drivers around you was this your father or grandfather I used to drive a school bus you drove a school bus personally you did like a long time ago I think we were talking about your dad then okay. um, I don't know why he's telling me about bad taste in men so um, does that make sense to you yeah well <laughs> They think that about me, yeah. <laughs> okay, he would say they've said that about you. Okay, mm -hmm. so I'm sorry, but this is, you know, okay. I'm getting a very jokey person on the other side, so mm -hmm. um, who actually shows me a lot of trouble, also a very troubled person. Could this be your father? I, I believe he was, yeah. Okay, so um, I'm connecting to somebody male who has passed. I'm actually connecting to two men who have passed. Both of them do not live near you or did not live near you. But I'm getting somebody whose ancestry, this is not a, a relative of yours. This is a person, the person I'm connecting to is someone that you knew, and another, the other person is definitely your dad who would be a long line of Canadians. Here's why I'm pick, picking this up. So your dad would have passed not too long ago. Yeah. Okay, so the other man, but I am still picking up somebody from another country. So, so uh, that would have been close to your dad then because it would have been somebody that was close to him or somebody that parented you when he didn't. So like a second father. Well, there was another man in my mom's life, yes. Right. So and like he a, was in the East Coast. Right, and he's also passed, correct? Yeah. I, I just thought maybe I got it wrong, but I'm definitely connecting with a second father that uh, tried to be a father and failed miserably mm -hmm. at it with you, and that you were very troubled when you were a teenager and, a t and in your 20s, and you had a lot of things that were really bad that happened to you, and he couldn't protect you. Yeah, so, and, and so he wants to apologize for not protecting you. He didn't know what to do. He was a very disturbed man. Do you understand this? Yeah, he really wants to say sorry for the things that happened to you. You understand this, right? Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm with the other guy now, sorry. So he left, so I'm talking about the abandonment, but wanted to reconnect with you when you were older. So there was a big period of time when you did not speak to your birth father, is this correct? Well, yeah, through different times, yeah. Yeah, like you were separated for, yeah. He, yeah. Okay, so he is suggesting that you are the one that felt that you were given away, that you were just handed over to the universe. Does that make sense to you at all? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so he is saying sorry for that because he could, he's saying he couldn't handle your mother. At all, the two of them were like really clashy. Okay, I always thought they were, I, I thought it was something different. Okay. Well, he's claiming they had a really rough time. We're, we're talking about your first father. Yeah. Okay, and he's showing me a lot of really weird colored linoleum. So uh, I don't know why he's showing me this, that he left, there was a kitchen with old linoleum tile. What does that mean to you? And then I'm seeing a kind of like a really narrow house with, uh, he's showing me like a, a shed in the back and it's narrow. Does this mean anything to you? 
it could have been the house that we had when we, I was small. But when I you were know. small. That's yeah. when he left, correct? Yeah. Yes. Because he was looking at the linoleum tile that was always dirty, he's saying. It never was clean. Okay. So does this make sense to you at all? So, well, it's hard to remember. I was young. Both men. Here's, let me sew this up. I'll ask them to help me. So, Because they're both saying similar things. They're both taking responsibility for the fact that you felt abandoned and that your whole life you felt abandoned. And every man has abandoned you in some way. Does that make sense to you at all? Okay. They're claiming responsibility for this. And so your choices have come to you because you didn't know any better and because that's what you thought was going to be normal. And that's not, the rest of your life doesn't need to be like that. And you have hung in there with your son, right? And, and he's a tough one, right? Your son is difficult. Yeah. And they're like, you're not abandoning your son, even though some days you just want to, right? mm -hmm. and he's been troubled as well. They're saying that there's, this isn't your fault. They want, they want you to know that you are a really good mom and it's not your fault. They want you to start trusting yourself again. You're really intuitive. Um, you've never allowed yourself to be the person that you know you can be because of how they raised you and, you know, and just how you felt like you were never going to amount to anything. And you can. It's never too late to start. You're creative. You've got all kinds of really great things that you want to do. And don't be scared to try. Does this make sense to you at all? I guess. Yeah. You guess? Coming up, Donna receives parental guidance. But you need to let go your resentment, I guess, around the subject because you can't do anything to fix it because you didn't do anything wrong. In the second part of Donna's reading, her father provides her with parenting advice. I think they're, they're talking about two things, both your son and an estrangement, um, you being disconnected from him for a period of time, and, and also you have stuff in storage because you're a bit of a, you're not sure where you belong, all right? Does that make sense? So mm -hmm. those two storylines here. So where, because they're showing me a bridge now between the two subjects, so this is yours. I get that. Both fathers, uh, both of them are saying, you know, that, that you mustn't let him go. You know, that there's, there's, he's very resentful to your son, very, very angry at you or, you know, for nothing. Mm. You didn't do anything. So um, that, ah, I see. Okay, so that the bridge will be towards you. Uh, he's very harsh. He blames you for either the loss of his dad or, you know, not allowing him to make this connection, even though it had nothing to do with you. But there will be forgiveness for you, but you need to let go your resentment, I guess, around the subject because you can't do anything to fix it because you didn't do anything wrong. Do you understand what mm -hmm. they're saying? Mm -hmm. So so as painful as it is to feel that, because you've just re reconnected to him again? Yeah, i just seen him recently. Yeah. yeah, good. Okay. They're saying that's going to grow into something beautiful. Don't look at the past as a, as a marker for what's going to happen to you in the future. Do you understand this? So they are definitely talking about that flea markety thing again because they're talking about sales or whatever, you starting another business because you're kind of lost in space at the moment. Is this true? Oh, I'm lost, yeah. Okay, so you're not... <laughs> well, they're saying lost in space because... <laughs> this whole I'm lost storyline of yours has got to go because they're saying that you are the most resourceful human being. You always land on your feet. You've got great ideas. It's like you just got to trust yourself. You are allergic to authority. You can't stand people telling you what to do, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. So you got to be your own boss. So they're, they're really concerned about your financial welfare right now. And uh, you need to trust yourself. You've got a lot of opportunity in front of you as long as you do it yourself. Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay. And you totally can. You are not lost. You are completely found in this moment. They are with you. They are your angels. And they're telling you, you have what it takes to be the person that you know you can be. Just forget the old stories of abandonment and loss and that you deserve any of that garbage, right? They're both there coast to coast. You've got angels lining up to support you, okay? I hope this helped you. All right. Well, I was kind of surprised because I felt abandoned all the time, so. So she hit it on when she said that. <laughs>